So, uh, you know, just because one thing goes wrong this time doesn't mean that that one thing will go wrong the next time. So it's a great opportunity to say, what went wrong this time? Where did it break down? What else could go wrong? Where could those things break down? And identify the points of failure in the current system. So when we understand those, we can start to do some things about them. But it's not just points of failure in the system. It's also points of failure, for instance, in communication styles. So the next step is my favorite, number four, and that is find an ally. Find an ally who is in what you may see as that point of failure. So in this case, in the marketing department. And I remember when I went to our new VP of marketing and I said, hey, you know, it's kind of like the knock on the door. <laughs> and she's like, oh no, I know what you're gonna talk about. I know it's crazy, I've had calls all day. And I said, okay, um, let's brainstorm this together. How can I help you? And my first question to her was, how can I help you? That's really important. When you're developing an ally, you might not even feel like that, that person's your ally right now. You might even be a little mad at them themselves. But coming to them and saying, how can I help you? Or let's brainstorm this together. Or you know what? Man, it must suck to be you right now. <laughs> and I don't want it to be. So I want to help us find success. When you find that ally, now you become a true team trying to find the solutions together. It's really easy when things break down in business to find somebody to blame. It's really easy to do more complaining about that person, that system, that department, and, and complain about all the ways that they have failed the system rather than take those steps and say, I'm gonna build a bridge. Let's build the bridge together. And as we build the bridge, that moves us really nicely into the fifth step. So the fifth and final step is truly recognizing and appreciating the roles that everybody else plays. And that means putting yourself in their shoes. So I knew that, uh, that this woman who was the new VP, um, she, was, she was handed quite a chaotic situation. And she was trying in a very short period of time to find great solutions, but there were still breakdowns. And I recognized that in her and I wanted to make sure that she knew I didn't see that as a failing of her. She just happened to be in the middle of the beginning. <laughs> and in the middle of the beginning, it's often very, very messy. But as we worked together as allies and we said, okay, what are the solutions? We came up with things that most people hadn't even thought of yet. But what it really allowed us to do is for us to appreciate each other and understand that if we know we're on the same team and we know that we're getting our teams to believe they're on the same team, we will build bridges that are much, much stronger. So the end to this story is something that I am so proud of in my career because not only did we find a solution and it wasn't always a complete solution and it didn't happen overnight, but we found a solution that really not only solved the marketing problem, it solved the communication problem and it solved the issue between my sales teams and the marketing teams so that they understood and really started to be invested in the fact that they were their own team, uh, one team altogether. So let me give you a couple of things that we did. First of all, we realized that one of the points of failure was how quickly things needed to be proofread and uh, had to be sent out to either um, you know media print or direct mail um, and often that, that line, they were working on so many pieces and we had so many different brand names that there were just way too many moving parts. And the marketing team was just uh, in the weeds. They were just completely blown over. And they were trying as hard as they could to keep up everything. When I saw the volume of work that some of those proofreaders were doing, it was beyond ridiculous. Um, so first thing I said is, let's get my team in there. So let's add one more point to help you. And so once your team thinks that it's before it goes to final proof, how about you send it to my managers who will send it to their stores? Because each store was doing something different. So imagine 500 locations, basically 500 different pieces for any given week. 
it was an awful lot of marketing going on. So you had phone numbers that were wrong. You had ads that were wrong. Sure, because we had too many things going on. So I put the responsibility on my team to help with the proofreading. Now, if they didn't get the proofreading done and it went back and came into, uh, into their marketing correctly, then you couldn't look side eyes at the marketing department. You had to look at yourself in the mirror. So that very step not only took more responsibility to my team, but I'll tell you what else it did. Man, did they end up with a greater appreciation for what especially the proofreaders did. They had no idea how many ways you had to look at how many periods were in something or you know, really look closely at numbers. And my team let some things slide along the way too. So they had to come back and say, we dropped the ball on this one. So not only did we you know, share the workload a little bit, but we started to gain a whole lot more kind of street cred for the marketing department when my team understood what they were really facing. But what we did then is we also implemented different marketing meetings. So my managers were involved with the marketing ahead of time, began, you know, in the beginning, short periods of time because we were running so far behind. But basically, uh, then we started moving months ahead. And so as we started planning farther and farther out, the sense of urgency relaxed. And so the pressure on the marketing team was relaxed. Our team felt more in control because they knew what was coming. So in this process, we started to be a team to work together. But through that whole process, then what I saw happen, and this one I didn't even ask for, and I was so excited when I saw it, is that when my managers would come into you know, the home office, they'd come to corporate headquarters, they would seek out people in the marketing department even just to say hello. Uh, one of them I remember brought a whole bunch of donuts for the marketing department saying, hey, you guys have just been knocking this out of the park. And through those communication cha challenges in the beginning, we had communication uh, you know, opportunities that really grew. And when I saw the evolution, I really knew that we, we moved that mark between saying us and them, and we started to value what somebody else brought to the table we started to give everybody a little bit more of a break. We started to help everybody lift. And number one, we all began to appreciate much more the fact that everybody had the same end objective, sell more hearing aids. But the process of getting there became much more of an overall team effort. So your assignment is to think about your work environment now. Is there a person, a department, a, a process that right now makes you want to scream and pull your hair out? And you think, why is this being done to me? This is the perfect opportunity for you to reflect and go through all of those processes, you know, and to really think, you know, who, what, where, you know, what, what are these things that I feel become a me versus them and us versus them. And when you reflect on it, take the time to go through the steps and think, about the possible points of failure and you know what are the priorities that we're all facing. But through that then, really identify your ally. Who's going to be your ally in this? And I'm not gonna lie, there are times that that person who needs to be your ally is probably the last person that you want to be your ally. I have a, a situation in mind that uh, is one that I still look back on and I regret myself that uh, someone that I felt was uh, creating tension that didn't need to be there really should have been my ally. I should have been reaching out to make that person my ally instead of seeing them from this lens. And when I look back now, I realize that I may do, I may have done something great once before but that doesn't mean that I always remember those things. And it really seemed daunting to me to reach across the aisle to somebody who I didn't necessarily trust and try to make them my ally. And I firmly believe that had I done that, there would have been some different outcomes. Now that doesn't mean that, that that's always a person that you can trust. That doesn't always mean it's a person that will be able to reach back across the aisle to you. But I'll tell you what, you know, being the one that actually makes the attempt definitely makes you feel like you've given it your all. And even though I have that one regret, I have enough 
instances in my life and my career where I can say, I'm glad I took that effort, I'm glad I took that chance, and I'm glad I encouraged my team to do the same. Because as you go along, you grow just as much as everyone else. So glad that you've joined us again. And remember, just because they're out to get you in your mind doesn't mean they really are. Ha, 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 ha.